It's actually surprising how good Chevrus is in the right situation. And in this video, I am going to showcase to you how viable her buffing is and what kind of damage potential she has. Most importantly, I will also explain what's the best way to play Chevrus, as well as show to you her best builds, weapons, teams and constellations. So, in a nutshell, Chevrus enables a new type of team archetype, where she will allow anyone who causes overload reaction to reduce the enemy's pyro and electro resistance by 40%. The only catch here is that the team must be made up of only pyro and electro characters, which is a similar team building restriction that Nilo also has. Aside from this, she can also shoot by tapping skill, or if held down, she can aim and shoot, while her burst will throw a big bomb with some smaller bomblets that can deal damage and even pull enemies inwards. So yeah, she's a gun crazed bomb thrower, hence I think she also loves snacking while doing this. Now I'll talk about her damage in a moment because I want to focus on this resistance shred which can be applied by anyone in the team. And I think this is huge since the amount is the same as Viridescent Venerator's set and this skyrockets her potential in certain teams. But let me show you quickly what I mean. This is my C0 Chevrus who is using the Fontaine Craftable Rightful Reward. She's also equipped with the new Song of Days Past 4 set and her talents are 1, 10 and 10. I'll explain later in the video how to build her and why I chose this particular free to play build. But starting with her healing, if she uses her skill, whether it hits the enemy or not, the active character will start receiving healing every 2 seconds for 12 seconds. Which means this will happen a total of 6 times. And with this healer build, it's pretty decent. 3807 every time, or about 22,842 total HP healed. Now, you'll notice she has around 40,000 HP. Well, there's a reason for that. You see, her other passive talent will boost every Pyro and Electro teammate's attack by 1% for every 1,000 HP Chevrolet has, and the max cap is 40,000 health or 40% attack. Now, to activate this buff, Chevrolet needs to unleash Overcharged Ball with her skill. Basically, you just need to use Overload Reaction with anybody, and this bullet will appear indicating that Chevrolet can now unleash Overcharged Ball with her skill. Which also, by the way, has the best multiplier compared to the Tap or Hold version. However, you do need to hold down the skill to unleash this enhanced attack and to apply the attack boosting buff for the team. And what's amazing about it is that it lasts 30 seconds. It's so long. It will be super easy to reapply it. And you can see in this example table, this buff at maximum 40,000 HP provides everyone with around 300 attack on average. Obviously, compared to Benny's boost, it's about 3 times weaker. But ironically, Benny will be one of the best teammates to use with Chevrolet anyway. So together, they will provide a significant attack boost. I mean, you've got an unlucky adventurer and one missing eye. They are meant to work together. But the big question is, how good is Chevrolet's boosting? Well, it's pretty good. Compared to second constellation Kazuha with Zypho's Moonlight, she actually boosts Raiden's damage by 2% more than Kazuha here. And to me, that's already pretty crazy. C0 4 star against C2 5 star, and she is already slightly beating him. However, once I give Kazuha Freedom Sworn, now he comes out on top by about 3%. And then, since Kujo Sar was not included in this Hyper Raiden team, I repeat this again, and Chevrolet is able to boost Raiden's damage to 400. 74,000 or so, while Freedom Sworn C2 Kazuha is able to push up to half a million damage, or about 5% more than with Chevrolet. Like, honestly, this is pretty good when it comes to a new 4 star. And one thing to keep in mind, that resistance shred coming from overloads thanks to Chevrolet will be applied on the enemies pretty much all the time. So everyone's damage will be better thanks to resistance shredding plus the attack boost Chevrolet provides. Still, her personal damage is really weak here when using her healer build. And also, Kazuha does not just boost damage, he is also a beast against multiple enemies. And his grouping is insane compared to Chevrolet, which by the way does exist. When she uses her burst, it will drop these bomblets and push enemies inwards, which is not that amazing, but can also be useful at times. However, now that I've mentioned damage, here's a highly invested Chevrolet's DPS build showcase, which includes Emblem Forset and Staff of Homa. As you can see here, the burst does about 68,000 damage, the other 8 bomblets pop off for about 9,100 or so damage, and then her skill with the special overcharge ball causes 44,000, as well as some small Usia damage that comes afterwards. And this amounts to about 190,000 damage over 4 or 5 seconds, which is pretty respectable when you fully focus on DPS build and don't spend that much time with her on field. All in all, Chevrolet provides a significant enough buff for the team, which includes both reducing enemies' pyro and electro resistance, as well as boosting her team's attack. And with a healer build, it's pretty easy to achieve this. While if you want her to do some damage, you can also go for a DPS build as well, which I'll actually talk about right now. 
So, as you saw it, there's two main ways you can build Chevres. If you go the healer route, her best in slot weapon is going to be Favonius Lance, followed by Katane Crossbear and Rightful Reward. But if you want a cheaper option, you can also go with the Black Tassel. Now, the goal of this build is to reach 40,000 HP to get that maximum attack boost for the team. And in my case, I was able to do it with just HP Sands and Goblet, while the Circlet had healing bonus, since Rightful Reward provides HP from Substat as well. But most common main stat loadouts will be either triple HP or double HP and healing bonus or energy recharge HP and either HP or healing bonus. And of course, if she's using Favonius Lance, then she'll need at least 50% critical rate. Now, I would say that her burst when playing as a healer doesn't matter that much. You don't have to use it each rotation since its damage is negligible. However, if you equip her with the Noblesse set, then building energy recharge will be important to trigger that buff from burst each rotation. But I found that my teams had Noblesse Oblige with Benny, so other good sets to go for as a healer would be Song of Days Past for some little extra damage boost to your active character, or even Climb Set if you have it. But even just double 20% HP 2 set items are fine. Again, just make sure to hit 40,000 HP with Chevres and you're good to go. Now, as for the DPS build, Emblem or Crimson Witch 4 sets are fine. I would lean more towards Emblem set since it provides energy recharge, which is important for Chevre's DPS build. But once you unlock her fourth constellation, you can also go for Golden Troop 4 set instead, since now her skill can be unleashed up to 3 times, which I'll talk about later. And as for weapons, Staff of Homa is her best DPS weapon, since it also double dips into HP to help with that healing and attack boosting, while other 5 star options can act as nice stat sticks like Staff of Scarlet Sands. And as for 4 star options, Deathmatch, Prospector's Drill, Missive Windspear, Favonius Lance, the catch of using Emblem Set, like honestly, any weapon that can help her with either obtaining burst faster or providing good raw stats will be fine. And of course, you've got the usual DPS main stats and substats shown here. So overall, for a low investment build, go with the healer route. And if you start obtaining her constellations and have high CV artifacts and a good weapon, go with her DPS build. Still, keep in mind that her biggest contribution to the team will be the resistance shred coming from overloads. So in the end, these builds are just there to enable one of her playstyles. Now, when it comes to her constellations, C1 is pretty nice, since it will now restore 6 energy to the active character when overload reaction occurs. This sadly doesn't include Chevres herself, and there's also a 10 second cooldown. But when running energy hungry characters like Shang Ling, it's pretty awesome she can recover energy this way. Next would be C2. When Chevres uses her hold version of the skill, now 2 chain explosions occur and deal pretty small damage, which also counts as skill damage. But the purpose of this constellation installation is to offer extra skill damage and a bit more area coverage. And as usual, C3 improves the skill by 3 levels, which means it will deal more damage but also provide more healing, which is nice, while C5 is literally just a damage boost for the burst. Now C4 is actually really interesting. When she uses the hold version of her skill, she can do a total of 3 shots, big damage if you can land all 3 of them without getting interrupted. Since the aiming can feel sluggish, and what's worse, there's a hidden cooldown for elemental particles, so you only get 4 particles even after firing off 3 shots. Still, this is where it's worth to shift focus from healer build to DPS Chevres, but I wouldn't say it's mandatory, just good enough to do it if you want to. Finally, we have C6, and with like a lot of other previously released 4 stars, this one is a big upgrade. First, when Chevres healing ends, everyone in the team will get healed for 10% of her max HP, which is nice, but more importantly, when anyone gets healed by her skill, they will gain 20% pyro and electro damage bonus, which can happen up to 3 times. So basically, it will take about 6 seconds to reach the max 60% damage buff, but it could also be faster if team wide heal occurs here. However, the majority of her healing will only get applied to the active character, so for the most part, depending on how you do the rotation, this isn't just a straightforward damage increase and will most likely affect just one character, unless you can snapshot this buff with someone like Fischl or Shang Ling. But as you can see here, at C6 with maximum damage buff including other buffs she provides, Raiden's damage goes up by quite a lot compared to C2 Kazuha with Freedom Sworn. But I won't lie, pulling this off compared to Kazuha is a lot harder. The rotation just doesn't feel natural, although maybe I just haven't found the right rotation yet. 
Now, when it comes to the best teams, there's actually several of them that work nice. And starting with a free-to-play comp, you can use Beto, Fischl, Benny, and Chevris. This team in particular was quite good on the first half of the current floor 12, and I was using her DPS Chevris at C0, just to see if she's able to provide viable damage, which actually turned out to be nice, since you can even vape attacks on Hydro Tulpa in addition to causing overloads. Even if it has in it Hydro Aura, you can still cause overloads. And if you want to make changes to the team, you can easily swap out Beto with Shang Ling. This way, you'll have consistent pyro application, but lose out on Electro Resonance, since there will be three pyro teammates. The other big team to go for would be Hyper Raiden, and I'm not just saying that because the banner is literally all four characters you can use for Hyper Raiden comp. Now, this team can be achieved with Benny, Raiden, Chevy, and either Fischl, Kujosara, or Shang Ling, depending on your needs. But this team definitely feels good against bosses, not so much against enemies that can be staggered because, I'll be honest, when you're running overload comps with Chevrus, you really want to go up against big bosses or enemies that cannot be easily staggered because you don't want to go chasing them around, especially when Raiden is ready to cut them down with big damage from her burst. And then finally we have Pyro Hyper Carry teams. You can use either Yoimiya, Klee, Yanfei, and Diluc along with Chevrus, and then usually Benny with either Fischl or Beto. Again, the important part here is that overloads will be knocking enemies away if they are susceptible to it, so make sure to use these comps against boss chambers or big enemies. All in all, I think Chevrus is a fun character that enables a new type of team comp, and the fact that she's a 4 star is pretty amazing. Still, it's important to remember that Overload as a reaction is really bad against a lot of enemies, since you have to waste time chasing them. So, the fact that you already have to build niche teams that consist of only Pyro and Electro teammates is already pretty limiting, and if that's not enough, the best use of these teams is only against boss rooms or enemies, like Ruin Guards who cannot be knocked away. And yet, it doesn't take that much to build Chevrus, especially since her best selling point only requires you to build a team of Pyro and Electro characters. And then, anyone who causes Overload will shred enemies' Pyro and Electro resistance, and that is already a big win in my book. So in short, I think Chevrus is a really nice unit if you want to run some specialized Overload teams. Her C6 can provide a big buff if utilized correctly, and she brings enough buffs that allow her to catch up to other buffers, while at the same time, she can also provide a good bit of healing if you build her that way. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and I'd appreciate if you press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.